Good afternoon, almost evening. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> almost evening. Um, this is my Sunday broadcast, hence the casual attire. This is episode number 913. Just keep track. And the topic today is Is that all there is? Five words that can actually transform your life and your relationship. And I'll explain why I mean it that way and how this will help you in a moment. Before I do that, let me. Just, let me before I do that, I'm going to take some time to introduce myself and why I do these talks and ideally speak slow enough so I don't trip over my own words and you'll be able to understand everything I'm saying. Hi, my name is Barry Silver. You haven't seen my broadcast before. This is my daily Facebook Live. Um, and I just jumped ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I highly recommend the book. Um, I posted about it earlier today, so I um, might we'll check out that post on my Facebook wall. Um, and help women create balance in love, life, and business. I do this because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which also informs my work, informs my work, and also inspired these talks three years ago, called "Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring the Feminine Heart." So these talks have been going on for a while now. Which is why today we're episode 913, and the topic that came up today, I was talking to a friend of mine, and it was a statement we talked about how. We say, is that all there is? Because people do that to themselves. They basically go, is that all there is? And don't know there's any way of getting out of that. They basically lock themselves into a limited belief. And that, unfortunately, isn't healthy. And I'm talking about relationships too, because actually that was a conversation I was having with my friend earlier about people who fall in love and get into a relationship. And they think that when they get married, they'll be fine. Or when they have kids, they'll be fine. Or when they have the right job, they'll be fine. You get the, the thing I'm saying here? And each time they go, is that all there is? Well, if you keep doing that, you're never going to get there, wherever there is for you, because you're in this place of, um, well, I guess it's the, 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 the image that comes to mind is the hamster wheel. The perpetual attempt to get somewhere because of one simple thing. And I get to that simple thing in a moment. So what it is you're driving to do, whether it's next job, next career, new town to live in, new country to move to, new car that you buy, new house you move into, new relationship you get into, marriage you have, kids you have, all these different things we do to get somewhere that we can't get to. So when you say, is that all there is? That's a clue. And that's what I'm saying is when you say, is that all there is? It can inspire you. And I'm going to give you the next piece in a moment. So stay tuned for that. I'm very aware that a lot of people are driven by this perpetual need to achieve to get something, to do something, to go somewhere, to be that special something. But the, I won't say the problem, but the flaw in this perspective is that when they do this perpetual cycle, hamster wheel, um, race, for want of a better word, what they're forgetting is the simple thing is that they're not home in themselves. Now I'll explain what that means in a moment. But, but the thing is, what it is, is they're busy out there. And when they're busy out there, they're not in here. And that's, what I'm, that's kind of what I'm talking about when you come home to yourself. I was going to make this a spiritual teaching because it is Sunday after all. And then I, I was going to do a spiritual teaching about something else. I might, we'll see if I roll into this one. No, it doesn't fit. Okay. So <laughs> I'm just having an argument with myself. Just, you know, enjoy the view was and talking about it. Yeah, let, me turn that, let me turn this around a little bit more because it, it's tapping my head. Okay. <laughs> rearranging the furniture so what I mean by coming into ourself is that we're in this society that's been teaching us driving us educating us and education is well I would say I would say um, not, so much not so much teaching not so much teaching us educating us but as in as imprinting us is a better word to think that there's always something out there to achieve to make us feel okay that when we've achieved that thing, whatever that thing is, as I mentioned a bunch of them earlier, we're going to be in a place where we go, great, I've made it, I'm happy, everything's great. But if you noticed in your life, because it happened in other people's lives, I know, and it happened to me a couple of times, where when we get to that place, when we have that success, we have that finish line we crossed, and we're in that place of feeling like, I've got it, I've done it, I've achieved it. What comes up right behind it is, is that all there is? And this is the thing. If you're noticing that happening, that's a clue, a hint, a possibility that maybe you're not doing the right thing. 
And what I'm thinking, if that's your case, is that what you're actually doing is you're trapped in a cycle of achieving things that don't satisfy you. In fact, you're achieving things that are feeling, um, well, un uh, no, it's not the right word. So this one's coming through so fast, I'm not even trying to articulate it. Let me back up and start that one again. Okay, I had to just regroup for a second. Coming home to yourself, let me get up to that piece for a moment. We are in a culture and society, as I said before, that keeps driving us forward to keep doing things. The one thing it doesn't do as a overt action is teach us how to come home to ourselves how to find ourselves in a place where we are already sufficient, we are worthy, we are whole, because we are all those things automatically. Yes, I'm just gonna let you know right off the, off, the, off the bat. You are a whole, worthy, complete person, period. End of story. There's nothing for you to do to create, to make happen, to change that or to make it work better because you already are whole, perfect and complete. Excuse me, whole, worthy and complete. Perfection's another story may not get into that one so my my gripe with this <laughs> if want a better word is that people forget this now you know I was at a guy here this morning normal Sunday you've seen people talking to people in great conversations met some wonderful people that I've met before some friends I've seen for long times so it was a great time to be in the mix of that fellowship which I, what I love doing but the thing that comes back more and more from the teaching from Reverend Michael I love more than he else is remembering that we are already whole beings as we are Yes, you can go out in the world and do these things and have relationships and have children and, and achieve goals and have new cars with different things. But remember, none of that, none of that changes that you're already whole. Who you are is a whole, worthy, complete being. And the thing about that is we, 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 well, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I love how these things show up. Um, <laughs> I spent quite a bit of my life, I guess I can talk about that, that's what came through, feeling that I was incomplete and feeling that I wasn't worthy or deserving because I came up less than other people. You know, I was never top of my class. I was close a couple of times, but never top of my class. Um, I was, I said, I said before, I was bullied in high school, so I felt diminished. I felt somewhat repressed. And so there was a part of me that was thinking that I wasn't worthy or complete or whole. I've done quite a bit of work since then to resolve that, but I was in this belief system that I wasn't worthy, whole, complete. And that was an that was a. I want to say it was a driver because the thing is it wasn't driving me the right way. For some people, <laughs> two different parts here. Some people are driven by that, saying that so they're feeling incomplete, so they keep striving, striving, striving to try and be complete by externally doing things, achieving things, grabbing things, getting things. But none of that external stuff will actually will, make, will actually help you feel whole. In fact, what the um, and I say it's. What the piece I want to make sure you get is that it really starts with you knowing that you're already whole, period, complete, as you are. And it's like, if I could just go, like, take your head and go, you're okay, you're whole, you're complete, you're already fine. Then everything else gets easier. Because then when you do choose to do all those external things, they're fun. Because if they work or they don't work, you're not as attached. And this is the piece of life that I really think is one of the biggest lessons I got. And thankfully I got it. Well, I keep getting it now, but it's like I've been getting it for a while. So if, you, if you're younger than me, good, get this one now. Save you some time. It's when you really get to the point where you understand that who you are is already whole, worthy, and complete. Then when you do things in the world and you experiment in the world and you achieve goals or you don't achieve goals, if you get a great job or you lose a great job, it's all part of the play. It's all part of the fun. It's part of the journey. And none of that has an impact on who you are. And this is the thing that most of us don't grab, grasp, um, understand if you look around at anybody around you maybe look in the mirror just saying but you look around the people around you you'll see people who are so externally referenced they never feel whole I mean it's one of the biggest causes of addictions and and depression and even suicide is people don't know they're already whole and so this message to you to all those people watching is that is that all there is is a futile statement, but it can be inspiring you to say, you know what, I've forgotten who I was. When you take that statement and flip it around and say, you know what, 
there's more to what's out there because there's more to what's in here. When you remember, excuse me, when you get reminded <laughs> sometimes that who you are is already worthy and deserving, life will start changing for you. This is also part of the, I mean, I'm thinking how this could fit into the, how you talk about abundance and the law of, and law, and law of attraction, these sort of things too. But as simple as that is knowing that you're already whole, knowing that you are already worthy, knowing that you're already complete. I keep coming back to the three words because they keep resonating for me. Then you recognize that you are not only deserving of everything out there in the world, but none of it is necessary for you to feel okay. So there is no, is that, is that all there is anymore? In fact, if anything happens, you'll discover that like, oh, that was fun, what's next? Oh, that was great, what's next? This was interesting, what's next? Because you're then focused on expansion, on growth, and enjoying life more and more and more, because none of that is actually that painful for you. Yes, Jane, hi Jane, yes, knowing whole and complete. And that's the thing, is when you get to know that yourself, you're whole and complete, everything will change. Because first of all, when you know that, you start to become internally referenced rather than externally referenced, which means that what happens out there isn't how you define your life. What's in here does define your life. And when you start to get that, and own that and respect that, then all that becomes secondary, which is what's supposed to be anyway. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jane. For, like, yes, <laughs> thank you for quoting me. I appreciate that. And so in my work with my clients, whether it's relationship centric or just self-esteem support centric, because I do both, it seems like now, a part of the journey, a large part of the process is to really help them remember their wholeness, to remember their worthiness, and to remember who they're, they're complete. Because that, that um, trifecta, <laughs> that's like a better word, is a functional place that we come from that makes everything out there work more easily. In my, my passion in this, as you may have guessed, is, is getting stronger. <laughs> as, we come on the as we come to the close of this year, and the decades they keep talk, uh, talking about. I think more and more I'm finding my work is focusing on the internal more than the external. Yes, I've been a relationship coach, relationship coach for a long time. And I'm finding myself talking more and more about the inner journey. I'm, okay, that's not true. I've been talking about the inner journey for quite a long time as part of my coaching. But when I speak to that internally, it changes everything because it's not just about relationship, it's about everything. As I said in the title, how it's, it's an opportunity to, to change your life and your relationships, because it's both. So the journey, remember wholeness makes everything worthy. Um, interesting way of putting it, Jane. Okay, I'm, so I'm, let me say it this way because I want to I make sure I clarify my part of this conversation. Worthiness is who we are, period. We are worthy. Nothing, nothing about how we look, how we work, what money we have, what money we don't have, who we know, who we don't know, what we achieve, none of that has any impact on our worthiness because we already are worthy. That stuff is all just play, that's just games, that's the matrix we play in. Okay, we're gonna play the matrix. <clears throat> Again, if you haven't seen my broadcast, I should say this right now, I've said it before, but in, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, a lot of stuff comes through sometimes without me even having to think about it. So sometimes I see these words shop in front of me and I go, oh, that's interesting. So matrix just came out, and I know that it's part of me that's been thinking about this thing that we play in the world that is really a matrix that we're in, like the movie in a way, but the sense that that what we do externally ultimately has no, um, I don't want to say value is the wrong word, but it has no true impact on our worthiness because we are already worthy whole beings. When you get that, remember that and own that, your life will be transformed forever. And it is sometimes part of my gift and my service to my clients to really help them remember that by digging through all the false beliefs that we've piled upon top of that. And I've done it myself. I've done been through that myself. I've I've definitely piled it on top of myself a lot of false beliefs that obscured my view of my unworthiness. And that's where it comes back to. You are already worthy. You just may have lost sight of that through a lot of um, masks and shells and shields between you and your worthiness because of what you've believed to be true about yourself, which isn't. And so, changing your beliefs, changing your own relationship with yourself, starts to shed those masks, shells, and say the veils is not the right word but like that sort of feeling so you've got to see yourself more clearly and when you see yourself more clearly and own who you are that's when you remember you're already worthy because there's nothing to get you don't get worthy you are worthy just be clear about that worthiness is a de facto standard no 
a de facto uh, aspect of who we are. Yes, yes, Jane, exactly. We are already worthy. I was trying to find a way of saying it. So my, my reminder to you in this talk is that you are worthy. There's nothing to go for to make worthiness happen. There's nothing to achieve to get somehow worthiness in a box. You are worthy as you are. Everything else is added to that. Now, that's kind of a spiritual teaching. It's also functional in my work. I, I'm very much about bringing spirituality in a functional format. So if you're in relationship challenges, part of that is to shift into, into worthiness because one of the challenges in relationship, as I've talked about many times before, is we buy into some belief that we're codependent. Excuse me, we, we, we buy into belief that we're not whole in relationships, so we need another person, which is codependency. We don't think we're codependent, we just do it without realizing it. When you remember who you are as a worthy person, and ideally the person you meet, the partner you meet, is also owning their worthiness, then you can have a healthy relationship. When you are in a place of feeling incomplete, which is what codependency really is. We don't believe we're, we're whole, so we think somebody else can make us feel whole, so we bind to them making us feel happy, which then means the power for us to feel happy is in their hands. Do you like being a puppet? Then we forget that we're worthy. So it's remembering worthiness is how we have healthy relationships with ourselves and everybody else. It's a shortcut. Knowing you're worthy is the gateway to access everything. I was watching where that was going to go. And, and more than anything else, I want you to make sure you get this clearly. You are worthy. Is that clear enough? <laughs> so I'm going to sign this up, summarize this, wrap this up, because I realize there's more to talk about. I've got two other talks brewing for tomorrow and Tuesday. Um, and I'll tell you about where you find the replays, by the way, that are, that are very much on the same thread. Um, we'll see. I think they are. I don't know for certain. But I want to let you know quickly, um, this is this is Sunday, my Sunday broadcast. I mentioned this with casual attire. Um, and I've been, I had an offer out this weekend, and today is the last day I'm offering single session coaching. Um, I mentioned that I'm not doing a Black Friday sale, and it's not cyber. Well, actually, no, I'll, you know what? I'll include tomorrow because tomorrow's Cyber Monday. I'm not doing the sales, but rather than just offering only three month to six month coaching, which I do offer if you want to go deeper, I'm also offering a single session coaching session if you want to try one out, like invest in one session. See how it goes and then decide if you want to sign up for anything more. I'll put a link in the comments. Excuse me, I don't have a link. I'll put a reminder in the comments. So you can mess message me over social media or you can just send me a message saying I want to find out more about that. So you can get one of those if you want, especially if this is the topic that's bugging you or triggering you or resonating for you. Um, I also put a couple of things in the comments as, as support for you, one of which is my self-love meditation because in a way, self-love is the gateway to worthiness. Excuse me. Self-love is the gateway to remember worthiness. I kind of keep saying that because I keep going, slipping out of it. And so for me, that's one reason I created the self-love practice. It's a guided meditation, two audio tracks, an AM meditation, a PM meditation that I created, that I recorded so you can have them in your, your phone or your media player, whatever you use, as well as a workbook. And the intention with that is to really anchor in your own knowing of who you really are, worthy, deserving, and fully loved. And by having that self-love practice as, a, as a, an ongoing practice, I'd recommend 30 days as a way to do it. it. It imprints a new habit that changes your mindset so you start to remember who you are and then you become aware of your worthiness. So that's giving me the comments too. Um, do those two things be enough? I've got some other things brewing, but I don't want to put in the comments right now. So again, in the comments will be two things, one of which is my um, invitation to grab a single session with me. And secondly is my self-love meditation. That'll do for now. Yeah. So um, that's kind of the theme. I'm, this is my theme at the moment. It seems to be what's going on for me. There may be more. I think there's a couple of talks coming through this week. It'll be the same theme, maybe deeper in different angles. So I appreciate you watching those if you want to get involved in that. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. Ta-da! <laughs> Seven days a week, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. Um, I might be moving them this week because I might be involved in something else on a 5 p.m. session. I'm going to see what happens. But usually, 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day of the week, right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. You can find me, watch me here. I'd love, to, love you to join me. Thanks for the input, Jane. Glad you were able to participate and give some dialogue. That was fun. Um, secondly, the replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast, because this is 913 of them, um, you can find most of them on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby to author. That is where... I keep archives more easily found. 
Unfortunately, Facebook doesn't save them all, save them all in the same place, but that's where you can look at them. But if you want, you want to watch all the broadcasts because you want to binge watch them or just go through and find every single one to find what you're looking for, I recommend my YouTube, recommend my YouTube channel. They are there as well. It's my safest place, not safest place. It's a secure place to put them. Um, but if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, that's my channel, please subscribe to it. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all of my broadcasts from newest to oldest are listed and you can scan through them and find titles that stand out for you or keywords, etc., and find a talk that will resonate for you. So that's 913 talks that'll keep you busy. Um, again, links will be in the comments as I mentioned. And if you have any questions about this topic, please put them below and ask in a way and I'll respond when I sign off. And if you want to share this with anybody you think might need to be reminded, feel free to do that. And um, that'll be it, I think, for my Sunday broadcast. I thank you for watching, as always. Um, and as always, my reminder to you is please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.